Welcome to another episode of Morning Mojo to inspire and motivate you on your day. Today, I'm super excited to welcome on the sofas here in the studio, Kate Bickford, who I've got to know quite recently through the wonderful Your Partnerships Network. Indeed. Kate, it's great to have you here. I'm going to get straight into the content. Mm. And, and, and starting a, a new job uh, at a time where most people are retiring... <laughs> You know, uh, why and and how and, you know, tell us the story. Um, I've been thinking about this for a very long time. Um, I've always had a massive interest in property and I'm a people person. You certainly are. Um, We've bought and sold and renovated and extended and, and done all that. And something came across my lap earlier last year. And I just thought, this is it. This is my time to become an estate agent. Wow. So that's what I'm doing because every home is unique because it depends on who lives there. And when people are selling a home, because we don't do it monthly, weekly, annually even, it's one of those processes that can become laborious, to say the least, and also incredibly stressful. And it really doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. So I just thought if I can make a difference and take some of that stress away from people and hold their hand through that process to head them on to their next adventure, Mm -hmm. then that for me is really quite exciting. I like that. Now, of course, you look very youthful. You're younger than I do now. And I'm going to just say this, you know, (laughs) why why don't you just retire? Why don't you just say I have like holidays all the time and just do nothing? I mean, I I do love my holidays and that we do love traveling. In fact, we're off to India quite soon. Um, But I can't just sit around and not do anything. I mean, my husband's retired and you'll find him on one of a couple of golf courses um, Mm. several times a week. But, no, I'm, I can't. I can't do that. I'm just. I've got too much energy. And let's face it, life's short. You only get one crack at it. This is not a rehearsal. Sure. So why not go and do something while I'm able? And and you know, my years of experience can help somebody to to cut through the crap. Yes. And uh, and move on. So what is Kate Bickford's purpose then on planet Earth? What's your purpose? Do you know what it is? You threw that one at I me. Know, straight in there. <laughs> Because you're still going. This is what I'm saying, yeah. you know, but what, you know, you're what's, not done yet by any stretch. No, so. good God, no. Mm. Um, what's my purpose? Mm. I think to help others. Um, I mean, that sounds really lame. It sounds like, lo- I mean, loads of people say that. Mm. But it's true you that. You mean it though. Yeah, our experiences make us what we are. And as you've said, I'm starting a business when a lot of people are retiring. That means I've got a lot of years behind me and therefore a lot of experience behind me. Mm. And with what I'm now doing, I have an interest in the finance world and an interest in um, uh, the way people's mindsets work. And that plays such a massive part in how we behave. And I always say you you can't control sometimes what's happening around you, but you can control your attitude towards that issue, mm-hmm. be that for good or bad. Mm-hmm. So to help people move forward and continually move forward rather than looking back, because we can't change what's happened. No. There's no point laboriously thinking about what's happened we have to move forward and progress. And if you're not moving forward and you're standing still, you're dying. Mm, mm, absolutely. And that's, I mean, we all know that in business. You've got to take that next step and move forward. And so I suppose to help people do that is where I'm at. If if I'm giving somebody some advice or some help or holding their hand and helping them take that next step, mm. that for me is really exciting. Mm. Indeed. I don't know if any of that makes it sense. It does make sense. It does make absolute sense. And uh, it's it's just, for me, it's like paying it forward and, and always helping others and inspiring other people. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we're always setting goals as well. So you reach a, a target, you know, mm. whether that's an, an age number or whether that's what you've set your goals out to achieve in business and you've hit those, you're constantly stretching them and making them bigger because mm. what do you do otherwise? You just say, oh, I'm done. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I'll, I'll a, leave now. Thank you. Start yeah. reading a book or doing some, you know, don't get me wrong. I love reading, but sure. that's not something I want to be doing sat on my backside and, no. and constantly doing that. I want to be out and about and um, just living. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and feeding the, the soul, the emotions yeah. and, and, and those experiences. Yeah, and the fact I have been lucky enough to get to the age I'm at 
You know, some people don't get that chance. I remember talking as if you're ancient, you're in your, your prime, <laughs> but I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Do you know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, I do want to touch on, obviously, we've known each other now for a, a while, but what fascinated me is I've got this thing here where I'm doing all this broadcasting, but you really are a broadcasting um, <laughs> legend. You know, you've, you've, just... you've worked within these wonderful um, establishments and um, worked on programs I used to watch. A very long time ago, Shane. You know, but, you know, but it's all part of the experiences and, and yeah. broadcasting and working for the BBC and things like that. And some of the programs like, you know, Play School and things like and that. Wogan, so and Wogan. And from... Wogan. Yeah. Lovely what, Terry. What a he guy he was. was. Fabulous. He was uh, like if, your favourite uncle. He was just lovely. I, I think I've told you, but just for the listeners and viewers, I very briefly I met him at the Daphne du Maurier Festival. He was right. my first ever celeb interview. And I was so nervous. Wow. And the, the cable from the microphone was really crackly. And I said, Sir Terry, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to go to the van, mm. which was like half a mile away, to go and get another cable. And he was brilliant. He said, Shane, mm. take your time. But I bet he put you at ease, he didn't did. he? He did. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so what, you worked on the actual Wogan, the programme? The programme, when it was oh, three wow. days a week. Yeah. yeah. So we were up at, in the Donut Tele Centre. And um, so, yeah, Play School Wogan Radio 1 in the 80s. Yes. In the, in the 80s, when it was just all amazing and so exciting as a, you know, as a, a, a young person going in, working in that environment. The road shows, do you remember those? I do remember the road shows. We used to have them here at Lion Bay and... Yeah. and things like that. In yeah. fact, I was talking to Mike Reed the other day. Well, I worked with Reed yeah. on uh, yeah. Radio 1. Yeah, we said. Yeah. And then again, full of name drops today, but was talking about Tony Hadley and that yeah. he was working yeah. within Radio 1 yeah. at the same time. Well, he and- used to come up um, into the office and uh, I worked, I mean, John Peel was an absolute legend. He was there and I worked with Tommy Vance on The Rock Show. He yes. sadly passed away. And Tony yeah. Wilson, the producer, both gone now. Yeah. Um, but I remember once, because we used to have to time the tracks as the production secretary, and where Heavy Rock's concerned. I mean, I quite liked it. I didn't know anything about it when I was starting to work on it. And I remember timing the track, and I had to stop watch going. And I'm thinking, on a, on a turntable, and thinking, God, this is a long track. And unbeknown to me, it had gone into the second track and it just morphed into the second oh. track without me realising it had been the end of the first track. Wow. So I had really had, initially, I really had to listen to what was coming because otherwise I'm just sitting there wasting time going, this is a 12 minute track, that can't be right. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, great, great times, great times. And how yeah. the media has changed as well. Oh, in that time, you, from when you was working it yeah, to yeah, now yeah. where, yeah. you know, even the small guys, you know, can oh. set up studios, have this wonderful uh, equipment and yeah, broadcast I mean, look at the, the cameras. world. It's ridiculous, you right? You know, we it's had like, cameras with the big wheels that that's right. you had to move and pull the wheels around with these yeah. massive cameras on them. That's right. Um, and um, and I was there when it was all the streaming started, so I was still working then. But it was all that downloading and being able to play something immediately when it was mm. online rather than literally physically running a tape, a VHS, down yes. to a transmission suite yes. from the edit suite. Yeah. That's Whereas right. now it's so much more instantaneous. It's, yeah, it's Wi-Fi, it it's SD cards. It really is. Yeah. Um, why do you think people want to retire at 40 now? Why are people starting to think, oh, I just want to retire now after what we just talked about? <laughs> no once idea. You get there, do you think once they get there, they're going to go, actually, this isn't, this isn't much fun? Well, it might be if they've got a purpose. So if if they've got a charitable purpose and if they have done very well, I know through you know social media and all now people mm. can get massive followings and suddenly they're, you know, a mini celebrity. I mean, look at the people that are on some of the reality programs. They come from YouTube. That's right. Yeah. And suddenly they are a celeb in their own right. Mm-hmm. And and if they've made that money and if they're they're going then to be altruistic and do some good with it, then fantastic. Or, mm-hmm. you know, if they want to travel or set up their own charities or whatever it is. But I can't Im- I can't imagine retiring at 40. I mean, crikey, I'm not even close to it now. No. No, I can never actually imagine retiring in the true sense of the word. No. I'd always have to be mm. doing something yeah. just to keep my mind, you know. Well, you're like me. Sharp. You're on it all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I cannot relax. <laughs> Even at the local um, business awards night that we were both went to, I'm still up at five in the morning because I, I want to cram more in. Yeah. And I know that's not good. Yeah. It's sustainable to keep No, you doing need sleep that. is good. You sleep do need is sleep. Good. <laughs> and not getting up for breakfast at nine o'clock after a five o'clock go to bed. No. But um, yeah. Um, Let's go back to the estate agency side of things uh, right. a moment. People say moving house is probably one of the most stressful things you can do. Mm. Why do you think it is stressful selling a house? In um, I think because we don't do it every day. And, uh, and it, it, it feels like a new thing every time we do it. And I think a lot of it is lack of communication. Um, I mean, obviously being in television, uh, communication is key. 
mm. especially when you're working in live TV. Everyone needs to know what everybody else is doing all of the time. And when people are selling a house, they don't get that. They don't get the communication. So we all know what it's like. You put your house on the market and suddenly you get a call going, uh, you've got a viewing today at two o'clock. So you run around like headless chicken and you tidy up and you hoover and you put everything away. And you go out and the agent comes around with the person and, and two o'clock comes and goes and you're looking at your watch going, oh, it's half past two, they must have gone by now. And then thinking, well, when are we going to find, you know, are they coming back? Did they like it? Did they turn up? Three o'clock comes, nothing, no communication. Close of play, half past five, five thirty, still nothing. So people go to bed thinking, well, did they love it? Did they hate it? What, what's happening? And all they need is a call a WhatsApp message, um, some form of message saying mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't quite right for them. They need that extra bedroom or the garden's too big or whatever reason it might be. Now, as the owner, you can move on. Sure. You go, yeah. okay, park that one. That's gone. It's not for them. Next. Mm. You don't wake up thinking, oh, my goodness, are they going to come back and come for a second viewing? And I think that all adds to it. Mm. So if you have got good communications – with your agent that takes a lot of that stress away because you know absolutely what's happening with your property all the time um and then of course you have to get another party involved you get solicitors involved and again you've got a three-way conversation going on then and again it's about communication mm -hmm. so is that what's going to separate you you know from the others then in uh, your venture I now yes i think so and and i will let people know but i'll also do because i've got no constraints in what i do because it's my business i can use social media to uh, put it out there to the widest possible audience. So it will mm. go on all the platforms, the normal Zoopla, right move. Mm. And let's face it, when was the last time you went into an estate agent? Physically, oh my on, goodness, yeah. physically <laughs> on the high street. Never, actually. I've never, you know, I'm, I'm 42. I've never been into no, an estate agent. No, so we all go, the first place we go is online mm. to find out what's, you know, on the market in the area. Mm. Mm. So um, for me, I can, it'll be on there, but it'll also be on you know, Instagram, Facebook. I've even got a TikTok account. Get you. <laughs> and how are you getting on with that? Any well, tips put, and tricks for no, the viewers? No, none yet at all. <laughs> I've got two posts up. Okay. But I am going to put something up that might get some traction. Okay. And, we, and you know, uh, of course, I sorry, of course, that TikTok's <laughs> all about entertainment, isn't it? Darling, you know? this is entertaining. It's actually me in a bath. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Um, okay. With lots of bubbles. That should get some views. And um, and I, I kept making myself laugh. I couldn't believe I was actually doing what I was doing. Yes. <laughs> Filming myself in a bath, in a house. And in fact, the house I was in is actually now let. So it might have gone on the market, but they've actually let the house. Um, but it had this beautiful slipper bath. Do you know the ones? Do you know those slipper baths? No. Megan might know. They're, no. they're, they sort of do this and they come up at the end. Right. So they are incredibly deep. Right. And for me, being only five foot two, my t my toes, my big toes are right at the end of the bath and there's like that much bath above <laughs> me. So it was this really deep bath. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, I, I do end up doing a bit of what you do, Shane, and vocalising in the bath. Nice. Nice. I'll have to make sure I drop you a follow. <laughs> I'll make sure we do that. So, um, yes, I've, I've because it is... Um, I think it will be a, a bit of a Marmite moment. It will be, what is she doing? Or, oh, my God, that's hysterical. It's either going to blow your account up into Absolutely. smithereens. Absolutely, or it'll die a death. <laughs> um, talking about communications and everything, is that the only thing then to make uh, selling houses easier? Or is there other kind of I think, well, things? you've got to sometimes, when people are viewing a house, the first thing they look at is the picture. So the pictures have to be good. Sure. I also think, and I will be brutally honest with people uh, when I go to see them and just say, look, you need to sort out surfaces, get rid of stuff because people don't want to see your stuff. They want to imagine their own stuff. Okay, so declutter them where possible. Massive just, declutter, yeah, like even shove tip. it in the cupboard, put it in the car, but get rid of stuff. Oh, wow. mm. um, and it might be getting a you know, vase of flowers there or it might be mm. just... Sometimes even rearranging a furniture. I've got a, a lady who is a stager. That's what she does as her business. Mm. And she went around to somebody's house and they'd been living there for 20 years because when you move in, you put stuff there. And how many times do you revisit where you've put things? Mm. You don't, mm. really, no, do you? You stay there for ages. It stays there for years. Yeah. And she moved. She literally moved the sofas around. 
And this lady said to her, oh, my God, mm. we never thought of doing that. Oh, no. We've lived like this for 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's suddenly, the space suddenly opened up. Mm. And she just, couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, it, from a personal point of view, things like, you know, curtains and things like that, you know, you can yeah, change things. Yeah, and... tidy the garden up, tidy mm. the entrance up, because the, the first thing people see is the outside of, of the house. And... You know, that gives a first impression. And we all know that people get first impressions personally. If you walk into a room, mm -hmm. people immediately have an impression of you. Of and that's exactly the same with a house. Mm. People are going to drive in, drive past an untidy garden and go, hmm. So it's not setting yeah. it off on a good footing. No, sure. Uh, and, yeah, making sure it's dusted and hoovered and everything else. But, yeah, it, there are nuances to it. Um, mm. uh but yeah, it's having good relationships with your agent. And sometimes vendors think their house is worth more than oh, it is. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is key. You can't always blame the estate agent for overpricing. It, sometimes it's the vendor. But for me, I will say, look, I don't believe it is worth that. And these are the comparisons in your area mm. of what you're up against. You know, have a look at them on Rightmove and see for yourself what, what there is on the market. Sure. Because if something's overpriced, you know within the first couple of weeks, if you've had no viewings or no offers, it might be the price. Yeah, sure. And you don't want things languishing on the market. Yeah. Now, I've got to ask you, with all this life experience you've had so far, what, mm. would, you, what would you go back and tell your younger self, you know, when you're leaving, oh, you know, as um, you're about to enter the working world, any kind of... Yeah, I think several several things actually. Um, nothing is permanent. Mm -hmm. Success isn't permanent. Failure True. isn't permanent. Mm -hmm. um, so there's always something else to go to. There's always something else to do. Um, education doesn't define you. Because some people don't learn in a classroom. No, I'm one of those people. Some people are successful when they leave education behind. I think finance, um, they don't teach it in schools. It's massive. I remember sitting down with somebody um, several years ago now and they were buying their first house and they were talking about mortgages and it was like they didn't know about different mortgages. So I went, right, let's get the kettle on, let's sit down. And, and I've got an interest in all that. I'd, you know, in another mm. life, I might have been in the city. Um, but all of that, you know, whether it's a tracker or a standard variable mm. or it's a fixed or it's a buy to let whatever it is sit down and and find out about that mm. and the other thing as far as that is concerned if somebody has got a mortgage overpay your mortgage even if it's 50 quid a month if you can afford to mm. overpay it because that takes years literally years off of a 25 year mortgage mm. because what you're paying is interest whereas if you're chunking that down a little bit every month that can make such a massive difference so mm. lots of yeah oh god yeah i could go on at that. Well, what about motivation and things like what motivates you each day um where do you pull your motivations from i think internally i think you can do as many courses or go to talks as you like but and you're motivated when you're in that environment mm -hmm. but when you come away from that environment environment what motivates you and it's got to be internal mm. there's got to be a burning desire to do something um because no no nothing is easy no business is easy so for me i've got i've got no qualms that that what i'm about to embark on is going to be easy but then if it was easy everyone would be doing it exactly no, this isn't easy. Building what you've built here, Shane, is not easy. <laughs> it certainly isn't. That's correct. <laughs> so you've had days probably where you've gone, oh, what's the point? I'm going to give up. Mm. But you didn't. Mm. And I will have those days, but I won't because mm. I know that nothing is permanent. That's right. You might have a bad, like I had a bad week last week, but it was a week. Sure. Yeah. It's Monday today. It's another day and I'm here with you guys. That's right. And what a pleasure it is to have you here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, but nothing is permanent. And just, you've got you to gotta just pick yourself up and pull your big girl's pants on. Well, big boy's pants on for you. <laughs> and, uh, and just move on and take that next step. Indeed. Because, you know, I, you know I'm just saying Rome wasn't built in a day, but it wasn't a business isn't built in a day or a week or a year could be 10 years it could be 20 years and if you have a passion for it then just keep putting one foot in front of the other 
and just keep, you know, small steps, baby goals, which leads to those bigger ones. You don't go to university and get a degree overnight. It's three years of one essay after another essay after another essay. Cool. And that in turn leads you to that three-year goal of that degree. Life is like that. It certainly is. It certainly is. Kate, I could talk to you for hours. Um, unfortunately, we don't have hours. Um, but thank you so much no, for coming thank down. Thank you. It's always a brighter place when you're in the studio. So thank you very much thank indeed. You. I really mean that. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing the journey unfold. Me for too. Your, um, uh, where do people go and find you? What's your social handles? What's um, the website address? So Facebook is Kate Bickford Estate Agent, uh, Instagram Kate B Estate Agent, and TikTok. I can't believe I'm Go saying on, this. Sorry, out. kids. Uh, it's Kate Bickford Estate Agent. Brilliant. I love the fact it's a self brand thing as well because people buy people. So it's yeah. great. Well, uh, there we go. There's another episode in the bag with the wonderful Kate Bickford. Thank you so much for all of you guys tuning in, like you're doing and sharing and subscribing. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so, so grateful. Uh, I'd like to thank a Restore More Machine for sponsoring this particular podcast, a wonderful engineering firm in Los Withiel, run by Barry Kennett. Make sure you check them out, click on the link, give them a like, give them a bit of social media love. They will appreciate it. My thanks as always to the producers of The Morning Mojo. That is, of course, Megan and Jay Kennett. Thank you very much to the both of you. Until next time, make sure you have the most amazing remainder of your day. See you next time. Bye.